Hi everybody and welcome to this video on sort of back to basics now. So um, it occurs to me that we spend most of our time trying to solve the really complex problems, the advanced problems that you're only going to see when you've, you've been doing sort of this job for a while. Um, so I thought it might be an idea just to knock together a series of videos for people that are completely fresh to uh, Palo Alto and, and have only just started or maybe even people that have only just started doing firewall administration. There's a few nuances and things like that to Palo Alto firewalls that it's just nice to know your way around or to have a reference to go back to should you should you need to. So I'm going to do as many of these videos as we possibly can to get people used to it, used to the terminology, used to um, what the things do and, and why you would configure them necessarily. Um, so we'll get started first with the management plane uh, or the management interface and, and so on. Um, so please like and subscribe if you know if you think it's going to be useful and you want to see more. Um, but for now, let's let's get on. So in the firewalls, when they first fire up, you'll notice as well that you have on the network. So we have these interfaces. So we have this is basically saying so it's Ethernet slot one 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 two one three one four. Those are your data plane interfaces. When we want to configure the management, so we want to configure say this address for instance. We do that under the device tab for the firewall and then interfaces. And this is going to be our ETH0. So this is always referred to as ETH0. This firewall is a standalone firewall. It's managed on its own. So we click into the management and here we've got our configurations. So we've got static. We can also select DHCP if you want, DHCP client, and then it will go off and find uh, its IP through DHCP, rather alarmingly. Um, administrative management services, you can enable HTTP and Telnet, but people don't because it's completely insecure. So HTTPS and SSH, so that means you're administrative, so it's administrating the box. So SSH in onto the device, or HTTPS to get into this that we're looking at now. And then the network services that can be run from the management interface. So you've got ping, user ID, syslog listener, and SNMP, and so on. Um, an important thing to remember here is that some of the boxes, say like PA220s, which are very old firewalls now, you probably won't see them, have um, an integrated management plane. So it's important to remember that you have a management plane and you have a data plane. And they're separate in virtually all firewalls except for PA220s and of course VMs and stuff like that, where there is actually no physical separation because it's, it's all software defined. And so where you have that, you've got to remember the more services that you run from the management interface, from the management plane, uh, the more that plane is going to be doing, the more CPU load is going to be on there. Uh, so you may potentially find yourself not being able to get to the device or, or something like that. Um, so then the MTU as well that you can, uh, you can change and the speed and auto negotiate, typical just standard networking terms. And then you've got your IPv6 configuration there as well. Uh, static and default gateway and everything around IPv6. I'm far from an IPv6 expert, so I'll not try and pretend I know sort of the, all the intricacies of it, but that's where you configure IPv6 addressing. But back in IPv4, we can, so we've done all that, and then we look at this side and we have our permitted IP addresses. So again, as well, the traffic for the management interfaces doesn't flow through the data plane. Not strictly true in all cases. So you can use a loopback address and you can put administrative management services on that and you can do that with an interface management profile. Um, or you could simply, you may find that you actually you access the VLAN or whatever the management's on through a data plane interface. So it does actually go through the firewall. But the, what we have is just a straight ACL here. So this is basically, I can say from my home network, slash 24, and it's my home network. All right, so now anything outside of that 192.168.0.24 isn't going to be able to connect because there's, a, there's an ACL blocking it, okay? And then we can see as well, once we come out of that, we've got the services uh, enabled there. So ping HTTP SSH, if I just change that, just to show you, if I just change that, so SNMP is going to run on there as well, um, and user ID. Then we see that that then changes. For the services, for the data plane, for the services, 
So for your, this is your firewall doing lookups. We come into the services menu, we've got the update server there. Uh, we have verify the update server identity. So is it gonna check certificate against what it should be? Uh, DNS servers and then our primary and secondary DNS there, all configured within here. Primary DNS, secondary DNS, the FQDN refresh time. Um, so when you have FQDN objects, how long is it gonna leave them before they get refreshed? What's the timer gonna be? I'm gonna need to go off and do another DNS lookup to make sure I've got the uh, the IP address for that. And then the stale entry timeout. So if something hasn't, if it hasn't refreshed, how long are you gonna hold on to that for? And all that's gonna be where you use FQDNs within firewall rules, all that is gonna be where you would you would sort of weigh up how long you want to you want to honor that for because obviously if you've got a you've got a security rule that is uh to an fqdn then that fqdn changes or that and you haven't had an update for that you could potentially start black hole in traffic okay ntp network time protocol speaks for itself uh then, then you have the addresses there you can put fqdns in because of course you live on your dns and you can do a lookup for it and then you have authentication type. So if you've got authenticated NTP, and NTP is something that certainly people are looking to do more uh, security with, um, you'd, you'd put that in there. Okay, so we click OK on that. For another, the, the last thing sort of within, I guess the last thing within our, our basic overview of management is a service route configuration. So by default, this is used management interface for all. So for all of our Palo Alto services, all the services that the firewall needs to reach out for, like its external dynamic lists, its uh, panorama, data services, certificate revocation list status, all that type of thing is all going to be done from the management interface unless otherwise configured here. So what we can do is we can configure here. So let's say if we want to go for panorama, if our panorama isn't on-prem or, or you need for some reason to go out of a data interface, you can then change that in there and you can change that to a different source interface. At the minute there isn't any interfaces configured, so if I had ETH11 configured, for instance, I'd be able to change it there. Using default is putting it back to the management, and then you can change multiple, and you can, uh, you can change them there in one go. You get the same option for IPv6. ADEM has now appeared, that's interesting. ADEM is appeared for because they've now moved the ADEM support onto firewalls. And then you've got destinations also. Well. Now you can add actually just a destination. This is where I'm going to, and this is where I want to source that, that traffic from. So that's really a very quick overview of the um, interfaces, the management interfaces, and how you're going to manage the box. With a hardware firewall, you would go in either through the console, or you could put, your, uh, put a laptop or a computer on, on the same network as it, and then you'd be able to reach it from that way. There's other stuff in here as well. So we've got the uh, telemetry. Telemetry is sending everything back to back to um, Palo Alto, and you're going to need that for things like AI ops reports and and things like that. So when you start looking at the cloud delivered services, that's where the telemetry goes. And then in here you've got further management uh, settings. So this is where you set the host name, the domain, time zone, uh, things like advanced routing who it's managed by, you're going to have central management, it's going to be panorama or cloud. Your device certificate, your device certificate is, is also referred to as the thermite certificate, and that is the certificate that the firewall uses to uh, for all its communication back to Paolo, so if it's pulling dynamic updates, it's doing anything like that, um, it will use that certificate. That certificate is expired, or you haven't got a certificate on the box, you're going to find you very limited in what you can actually do, uh, because it won't be able to... Uh, it won't be able to authenticate itself to Palo Alto. You've got your authentication settings. Again, this is for specifically for the management and policy rule-based settings and, and login settings and so on there. Now, where a firewall is managed by Panorama, this firewall is managed by Panorama, as we can see. So we go in here, we've got my two Panorama servers. We get the, the little cogs, and we get here specifically, we get an orange cog over top, so the template values, so the values that are sent down to this device from the template, which I'll show you in a minute, have been overridden. If we wanted to revert them, we could go and click revert. The button's missing again from the bottom for some reason. It does that in, it does that in uh, Firefox sometimes. And again, we can add the entry, entries here for the permitted IP address and the network services. 
and you can see where these are these are template values so they've come from the template stack um, I think when you're managing devices from Panorama you have to remember that you you create a template stack you've got virtual uh, a certain amount of templates within that that configuration is then flattened all the configuration if you imagine flattening that onto a desk all the configuration that's on the top is what's going to be honored unless you change the order which I don't know why you would um, but you could if you wanted uh, that's, so that's where that comes from. If I just click on that, I'm going to revert it back to uh, the template value because it was overridden. Sometimes you see very weird things like that where actually it's saying that the template value is overridden, but actually when you do it, it goes back to the same value. That I just think that might be a quirk, for instance. Uh, and then on the services, you can do that again. So you can now, your service route configurations can all be done from the template. So if we now look at Panorama, where in the VMs uh, and the firewalls you've got the device. Device now is part of the templates. So when you're configuring a device there, you would go to that template we saw before. So the VM Chicago, and that's where we would see all the configuration settings that we just saw. If we want to configure Panorama itself, then we have to go to the Panorama tab. And then the interfaces that are on there. Now Panorama has multiple interfaces, it has multiple interfaces because there's multiple services can be run from it, but essentially if you're just setting up the, the management of it, you would click into the management and then you've got public IP address. Public IP address is, is important for other reasons as well, but it also gives the Panorama, the re, it understands that it's got a public IP address and it can pass that down to, to, uh, to firewalls when they want to communicate back to it and so on. Uh, the IP address, again, Netmask and default gateway, all standard stuff. IPv6 is configured within here. Possibly in this, uh, this box might be a little bit out of date now, a bit of an old version. So later it might be in a separate tab, but I don't believe it is. And then you've got your MTU. So device management services. So these are, these are the services that you're going to have on the device. And if we just move that slightly to one side, you can see where you've got the services that are enabled there. And you can see that they, they mirror what's there. Um, device management and device log collection, collector group communication, so collector groups if they're talking to each other, syslog forwarding, device telemetry, device deployment, all the services that your firewalls are going to consume or they're going to um, need to have running the box to speak back to. Uh, administrative management services again, as we saw before, and then network services, ping and user ID and SNMP. Again, we've got the same ACL, so we can say that we only want access from 192.168.0.0 in my case, slash 24, or whatever your home network or your management networks might be, but that's where you would put that. And that would essentially be your first line of defense uh, for any kind of uh, any kind of security, any kind of potential attack that might, might take place. If we go to Ethernet 1.1, have the Ethernet 1, bearing in mind that the reason we've got the 1.1, the 1.2, the 1.3, 1.4, 1.5 1 in this particular setting is because we're on Panorama. Panorama doesn't actually have any concept of a firewall data plane because it isn't a firewall, it's simply management. And then we can enable the interface and we can decide what services we want to run on there. So if you are um, device management and device log collection, so effectively, let's just, if we look at a use case, so if our management, if our ETH zero is on a one gig connection, for instance, or something like that, you probably wouldn't want, say, 10, 15 firewalls, anything up to 100 firewalls, 200 firewalls, writing all their logs back to here if this is acting as a log collector as well. Because you'd very quickly find that you could no longer manage your box, you couldn't get onto Panorama because it's going to be, uh, it's going to be basically DDoSing yourself. So you would, if this was say a 10 gig interface or you had 1, 2, 3 and 4 all in a, a port group or something, you could enable these and you could do the device and log collection on there which means you've then got a bigger pipe to get those logs in and, uh, and you, you're reserving resources on your management interface. If we go further into telemetry, my telemetry has failed as you can see because my certificate has expired and the certificate is in the same place as it is on the firewalls and we can see that it is indeed expired and needs replacing. And then we have the other, we have the other settings here for the other management as well. Here's where we can set that we need audit comments and things like this, so this is now controlling your rule base there is uh, there is another setting on here within the the panorama settings because you see you've got panorama settings here but we also have them here as well 
uh, and that is to share unused address and service objects with devices. And literally, as it says, so uh, one of the, one of the problems you can hit potentially in a big organisation is you'll have big firewalls at SATA DCs, and then you'll have smaller, lower capacity firewalls at branches, for instance. The databases of objects and service objects can grow quite large. So with that share unused address and service objects with devices ticked, what that's going to do is regardless of whether that object that you create in Panorama is required on a firewall, so it's required by policy, um, it's going to send it which could very easily um, overwhelm the box and you could end up with, a, say, a capacity issue and not being able to put stuff onto the device because it's, it's reached the capacity. And without it, which is the default, it then will go through and as you configure stuff and you're pushing out to your firewall, it will look to see if the object has been referenced in a policy. If it has, it will push it and if it hasn't, then it, it won't. Okay, so there's, there's different things there that are, are sort of different with, um, with Panorama. Uh, the interface, as I say, is the same, telemetry is the same, and the services are the same, with the exception of the service route, because there is no concept of a, of a firewall data plane um, configuration. Uh, again, along here is where you configure your, your wildfire, your wildfire cloud or private cloud, or the proxy settings for the cloud, and you have... Um, SS management profile setting that so you can actually configure the SSH uh, ciphers and so on for SSH into the device. Um, and then the, the ACE, which is the uh, App ID cloud engine, so that's actually a completely different. If you have SAS inline security or a SAS inline security license, then you have access to the cloud engine. So there is about 2,000, 2,500, I think, at last count, it may even be four. Um, thousand app IDs within the app ID dictionary which is then passed down to the firewall and that comes down in your applications and threats updates uh, but also there's circa 9,000 or so other applications that are available from the cloud engine that you can make use of and I believe you get that by default with a SAS inline security uh, license or DLP license um, it's if you do have the license for it it's enabled by default and if you want to disable it you can there um, and you get the same option with, with the firewall. Uh, so that's, that's it really. Um, the administrators are configured in the same place. So administrators, then admin rules, uh, roles, sorry, and access domains for panoramas. So you got access domains, what can this user get to? What can they affect? What can they configure? Uh, and again, you have the administrators there. That's really very quick, very basic. I know it's taken nearly 20 minutes. Um, very quick, very basic, starting off with the management plane, what the management plane does, um, how it's separate on certain firewalls, so it's separate from, physically separate on majority of hardware firewalls apart from PA220s, not sure about the 400 series, I believe it's a separate board in them as well, uh, but then you have a separation of resources for VMs and so on, so that process has a certain amount of resources allocated to it. Um, be careful when configuring a lot of services to use the management interface because you can end up in a situation where your management interface isn't uh, isn't reachable. If you re get to that point, you are kind of stuck until it becomes reachable. Um, but that's it, yeah. So the, the next one is going to be on all the, the tabs that we have across the top and what's going to be in them. Uh, and as well as looking, say, once we get to the tabs, we can look at the device group and the template differences and how that then affects how people... Uh, configure firewalls from Panorama. So I hope that's helped. Uh, so give us a like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.